There are different gifts, but it's the same Spirit who gives them. There are different ways of serving God, but it is the same God who served. God works for different people in many different ways, but it's the same God who achieves God's purposes for them all. Each one is given a gift by the Spirit to use for the common good. Together, we are the body of the living Christ and individually members of the living Christ. Though we have different gifts, together we are a ministry of reconciliation led by the living Christ. We work and pray to make the church useful in the world, and we call women and men, youth and children, to continue Jesus' ministry and follow the Jesus way. Within our common ministry, some members are chosen for particular work as ministers of the word, ruling elders and deacons. In ordination, we recognize these special ministries, remembering that Jesus said, whoever among you wants to be great must become the servant of all. Madam Moderator, speaking for the people of the church, I present Valerie Edwards, Mark Larson, and Bradley McCallum to be ordained and installed as elder, Philip Commissaris to be ordained and installed as youth elder, and Cindy Edwards, Irene Larson, Yemi Kinney Ulusine, and Jim Thiel to be ordained and installed as deacon. And the following persons to be installed as elders, Milford Dean Luster and Bob Ponder and Richard Sale, and the following persons to be installed as deacons, Rob Jackson, Greg Jenkins, Jeannie Letterman, and Nancy Seaforth. God has called all of you by the voice of the church to serve in a special way. You know who we are, what we believe, and you understand the work for which we have been chosen and how we live together in community. I'm going to ask you questions and, and ask you to respond together to the questions I'm asking. Do you trust in Jesus Christ your, as your, no, try again. Do you trust in Jesus Christ your Savior, acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be by the Holy Spirit the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church universal and God's word to you? Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic and reliable expositions of what scripture leads you to believe and do, and will you be instructed and led by these confessions as you lead the people of God? Will you fulfill your office in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of scripture and be continually guided by our confessions? Will you be governed by our church's polity, and will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them, subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? Will you in your life seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? Will you seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? For those of you that are being ordained or installed as elder or youth elder, please answer this question. Will you be a faithful elder, watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in government and discipline, serving in government bodies of the church, and in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? For those of you that are being ordained or installed as deacon, would you please answer this question? Will you be a faithful deacon teaching charity, urging concern, and directing the people's help to the friendless and those in need? And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? And this is for the congregation. Do we, the members of the church, accept these people as elders or deacons chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ? And if so, please say yes. 
do we agree to encourage them to respect their decisions and to follow as they guide us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is head of the church? And if so, say yes. I'll invite, if you are able, all elders and deacons that are being uh, ordained to please kneel. If you're not able, would you please come forward closer and the rest of you can stand near, near them. I'll also ask anyone that is ordained in the congregation as an elder, deacon, or minister of the word and sacrament to please come forward for the joining of the laying on of hands if you would like to do so. Perhaps those of you that are closer can put your hands on those being ordained and others can behind you can put your hand on the shoulder of someone in front of you. We have most of the congregation here. <laughs> Let us pray. God, we are grateful for those before us in this moment who are being ordained. May the power of your spirit be upon them and within them as they seek to lead us in this congregation. Help us to be ready to hear what they have to say, ready to hear what they have to say about how the spirit is moving in their lives and how they believe the Spirit is moving this church and help us to be ready to follow where they lead us. Amen. I'll stay there a moment. You are now elders and deacons in the Church of the Living Christ and for this congregation. Whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the living Christ, giving thanks to God and following the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I ask you to stand and to move things along a little bit. Those of you that are currently serving on session, I'll ask you to greet our new elders and deacons, and I'll ask the rest of you to please greet them a bit later in the Great Hall. Oh, good. 